Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. I love sharing knowledge, and today I'll give you an insight of some tricks that I'm using at the moment. I'm excited to take you through this. I hope my tips can help you. Without further ado, here we go. Five producer tips for you right here in this vlog. These are more intermediate to advanced type of producer plugins that I'm gonna be using. Some of them are really famous and a lot of people use them. And of course I could go in depth with all these plugins, but I'm really just gonna give you a taster of what they do and what I do with them on a regular basis. Some easy tips and tricks and hacks right here for you. Okay, so the OTT, it sounds a little bit like the sound goodizer I used to use in FL Studio, but a plugin a lot of people use, and I've only started using this for about two years now, and it was a little bit weird trying to use it at first because it really just puts your sound on steroids, but how to exactly handle this and how to tame it a little bit, I'll show you right now, and it's really just twisting two little knobs and I'll show you. Okay, so we have the, the lead sound here. I've put a little bit of chorus on it. It sounds like this now. And so I just drop the OTT on there and then it sounds like this. And so it's a lot. And so the two knobs that I'll just uh, tweak right now is the depth knob, which I usually set to about 50%. I'll let you hear what that sounds like. So right now it's quite over the top, right? So just make this about 50%. And usually I'll just fix the out output gain as well. And so right now you can compare with the original volume of the sound. Okay, so it sounds a, maybe a little bit louder. Here we go. Just giving it a little less out. Maybe it needs a little bit more of high end here. It's good on the low ends and maybe a little bit of mid. I like it because this is kind of like a DJ EQ right here. And so the sound before and the sound after. Maybe give it a little bit more high end here. And so using the OTT for the first couple of times, I was totally in shock because it put the sound on steroids. It was over the top. And so just doing these two things and then maybe tweaking the high mids and lows will help you get that fatter sound instantly. <laughs> I purposely didn't choose Ableton plugins for this uh, tutorial right here because I want uh, the FL Studio viewers to learn from this as well. And uh, what I'm going to do next is going to take it next level. We're going to have a look at the Ozone 9's Match EQ, which comes in really handy for, uh, for mastering. I always use this at the end of my mastering process just to make sure that, that all the frequencies are right in there. And the cool thing is if you have a reference, a track, that you think sounds fat everywhere, you can just easily go ahead and capture it here. So what you do, say this is my reference track. Keep on rocking, shout out to Paradox who uh, did some incredible mastering on this and I actually made a tutorial about that as well. Make sure to check it down below because the mastering on this is insane. So I wanna reference this. I wanna actually put this on my own mastering. So I'll play the track and with the Ozone Match EQ, I'm just gonna hit capture and then play the track. And stop. And so now it has all the frequencies saved here. And I'm just gonna go out to presets and I'm just gonna hit the plus button right here and I'm gonna say Pyrodox 2. I already have it saved, but I'll uh, save an extra one for this, uh, for this tutorial. And so what I do now say, I'm gonna go here to my, uh, my pre-master channel, which is where I master, which I, where I had the, the other match EQ. So say you have uh, some EQs and compressors going on. And then at the end, just before the limiter, I'll usually put the match EQ. 
and then I'll go over here and go into the presets and then I'll pull up that Paradox Mastering. There it is, it's back. And now we'll need to capture the frequencies from our current track. So it sounds like this and I'll capture it. So you see on the pre-master I didn't do any mastering yet. It uh, varies in frequencies. So with these two parameters you can adjust the amount that you want uh, ozone to work to get it matched. And with this you can make it a little bit smoother. Um, I usually just put it put it on 30% and then with this amount it varies it depends on if you go back and forth and it sounds the same or not so with adjusting those parameters all the way at the end of your mastering process you can actually get a very similar sounding master but always make sure that you you listen out and uh, don't let the algorithm do all your work but it is possible to get really close so maybe try it out at the end of your mastering chain don't go anywhere because next up I'll tell you how to carve out your kick and bass. But new music alert though, we've released a couple of new Mix Mash Deep tracks. Young Yen and Ruta featuring Brenton Matthias with Nothing Else Matters. The Russian duo Funk Machine released a banger with some mesmerizing vocals by the talented Jamie Deraz. Do you remember Domastic from our collaboration You Don't? He joined forces with Anna Harrison for his latest track, Violence. On the main label, we've dropped three Rolling Stone remixes. Remixes by Carta. Vivid. And Honey and Badger. which makes the remix pack complete. Very curious to know which one of the five remixes you like the most. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And last but not least, our very own Mix Mash family member, Lady B with her new track, Gang Gang. This one dropped today and I have to say, what a club banger. This really makes me want to go behind those decks and get the party started. Speaking of Mix Mash family, keep an eye out on the Mix Mash socials because we've got a very big sale coming up next week and I can guarantee you that it'll be worth it. So don't miss out. And here we go, the good old LFO tool, which I love to use for my side chaining. A lot of people know this plugin and a lot of people use this plugin, but it wasn't until recently that I really started using it to carve out frequencies. So here's my kick and bass line without the LFO tool. And obviously you can put it on and it'll, uh, it'll be this shape as a standard. So you see it working here, ducking the signal right here. But what I did not know is that you can add points onto that curve as well. And so now what I use nowadays is I literally, I make all of this space for the kick drum. And maybe we can curve this a little bit. But so it means that here, actually there's no sound, which leaves all of the space for the kick drum. Obviously, if you would just drag it here, you would not hear anything. So it means literally here, there is not a single sound, which means the kick drum has full range and it instantly helps with um, getting your subs tighter, 
with letting your bass sit much better. Even using a, a relatively light kick and, and a huge bass line under there, really carving the kick drum out of that bass section. But you could do it the other way around as well. And so I have an LFO tool on the kick drum as well, where I actually do the opposite. So this anchor point here now functions as the, the kick drum's release or tail. You can make it longer or you can make it really snappy and short. Super short right here. Ideally you want both of them to be opposite to one another, but this is how you easily carve out the kick and bass in your productions. Okay, so now we're gonna take it next level with the dynamic EQing in Pro Q3. So I have put this EQ on my low violin right here. And what a dynamic EQ does, it ducks only in certain frequencies and only when the signal hits those frequencies. So let's have a look at the violin here. So I'm just going to take this peak, for instance, right? I'm going to give it a, a little bit of gain. So it's this peak right here. Say this is a peak I don't want. So I'll put this to zero. And then I'll drag the second ring of this EQ right here down. This means right now nothing is happening, but whenever the signal hits this little peak, it'll dock for minus 5.78 decibels right now. So you see it going there, right? So this is what a dynamic EQ does. Whereas if, if this would be zero, this would be doing nothing, or it could be a regular EQ right here. But now it becomes dynamic, and I think this is magic. With help of this, I've been going into my EQs surgically and really just working with vocals as well, taking out certain frequencies that hit while not actually EQing the whole vocal, and it's incredible. What's also incredible is this little auto button. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the, the Pro Q3 as a sidechain EQ. How about that? So I'm gonna press this and all of a sudden, making this one blue as well, by pressing that, by pressing auto and making this blue, all of a sudden, this EQ will now become a sidechaining type of EQ. So as an input, I'm just gonna put my kick drum in here for you to see. And so now this EQ changed, not being a dynamic EQ, but actually being a sidechain EQ. So let's see if we see the kick signal coming in here now. So this is the actual kick drum in the red. And this is the signal, the kick drum signal, triggering the violin, right? So this would be perfect for sidechain EQing as well. Only a certain frequency. But we can all also do it the other way around. Say it needs a little bit of um, extra on the kick drum. We EQ it like this. Maybe it should be a different frequency. Maybe it should be this one. Let me show you what it sounds like with and without. Okay, so we have this frequency right now coming in. And this is without the, the Pro Q3. And so can you imagine the possibilities with this? Sometimes I actually uh, EQ the kick and the bass this way where uh, the bass just ducks um, using the EQ as my sidechain. And the last one, the number five of this vlog, the Pro MB, Fab Filters Pro Multi-Band Compressor. And I have to admit, I used to be very afraid of multi-band compression because I, I really didn't get a grip on it. I didn't really know what to do with it. But now, thanks to this plugin, I found out. And so yes, it does look a lot like the Pro Q3, but it's not an EQ. The difference is we can take various bands in our signal and we can actually limit or compress 
just a section of the track and so for mastering it's awesome but say you have a vocal as well and needs a little bit more of like mid-low you can just grab the band drag it up a little bit lower the range and without creating crazy spikes by doing that by actually limiting or compressing on the spot you can instantly get your sound fatter so i'm going to show it to you on the master right here so i'm going to set set this before my limiter right now so I have my track, right? Let's say I see a little bit of a dip right here. So I'm just going to double click this and I'm going to create a little peak here. You can over exaggerate and, and hear what it actually does, right? So maybe it's just, just this band I want to have. And you, by holding the command key you can make it tighter even and by dragging this you can make it uh, a 24 db slope or even up to 48 make it super tight and then over here you have this little band uh, range line and so dragging this up there will give it less dynamics aka it, it'll start compressing heavily Maybe I want this bit, or maybe I want an extra band, and I can go here, do the same thing, maybe make it smaller. Whatever sounds nice, right? Maybe give it a little bit more range. And now I can lower these, or I can go in here and make the dry wet, say 50%. And so now I added some crazy frequencies, making the sound a little bit fatter without actually making peaks. And this for me has been mind blowing, especially by mastering, just trying to figure out how to get certain frequencies to stick out without actually going over the top on my limiter, on my end limiter. And this has been the way. And on that note, we're at the end of my five producer tips for you. Do you have any tips or tricks you think I missed or some secrets you would really like to share with other DJs and producers? Let's help each other a bit by sharing your best tip in the comments down below. Before we end this vlog, I want to tell you about the new the latest episode I recorded for Late Night Luke. I had such fun chatting with Mike Williams, Sam Felt and Juicy M the other day. The second to last episode of 2020 will air the 21st of November and after that we'll be doing one more episode to round up the season and then it's time for a little break to reflect and get ready for even more fun second season. Let me know who and what you would like to see in the final episode. Next vlog I'm thinking of reviewing demos again. I am sure you've been making a ton of music during this pandemic. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like this video if it helped you in any way and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with my newest videos. Until next time, L's up, rave safely and salute.